Alrighty, so we have, um, I mentioned PKA, PKB a second ago. Sometimes textbooks or internet resources will actually list the acid dissociate con dissociation constants as PKAs and PKBs because they're easier to type, basically. So like for ammonia, if our Ka is this value, that the PKA is just going to be that number as a negative log. And so the reason that's easier is because KAs and KBs span a huge range, all the way from like 10 to the negative 15 up to, you know, one. So it's a really big range, but the PKAs are gonna be a little bit more manageable. So here a PKA of ammonium is 9.25. And the PKB of ammonia is 4.74. And so what's interesting about this is the formula I showed you a second ago, these are gonna add up to basically get you 14, right? There's some rounding error because logarithm, but pretty close to 14, okay? And so, um, if I'm given PKA instead of instead of KA, and I need to get to KB, it's faster if uh, say, you know. So this is our PKB. That's our base dissociation constant as a logarithm function. If I needed to get to, I wrote something down wrong. Four point seven four, not fourteen. I wonder if you caught that before I did. I hope so. Boop. Boop. Okay, fixed it. So anyway, um, if I needed to get to, uh, say, a Ka from this PKB, what I'll do is just go 14 minus that value. Oh, man, I did it again. <laughs> it's because I don't have you guys here to keep me, keep me on track. Um, and, of course, that's going to be like 9.26. And that equals a pKa. And so then I just have to go 10 to the negative 9.26 to get Ka. So the same formulas that we applied um, to pH apply to Ka's and Kb's also. I'm writing a few extra sig figs just for your reference. But this is going to round, you know, 5.5. It's close enough. Um, same order of magnitude again that's what we really care about when we're talking about the case so this is a handy formula to know and um you can rearrange so like if I, I just now i had a kb but i wanted a ka but you do the same thing if you have a ka and you want kb you just go 14 minus what you have gives you what you need all right and so um a lot of the time in lab we use things like sodium acetate, NaCH3COO, or often it can be written in the textbook like this. You should know that material. We use it a lot. Um, or even ammonium acetate, we use that a lot as well. These are, these are made by essentially reacting acetic acid so that you can precipitate out the salt of its um, conjugate. So acetate comes from acetic acid. So if I take some a sodium acetate and I put it in water, the question is, what is that going to do to the pH? Why do we put it in there in the first place in lab? And so that's probably to control pH. So the reaction that's going to happen here, well, it's actually two parts, right? We're not quite ready for the equilibrium because we need to realize that the very first thing to happen is the ionic bond is going to ionize. So what you actually end up with is these two species. And so then you have to ask yourself, what's going to happen to each of those? OK. So if I take Na plus and I react it with water, I like to put a question mark here because I'm not sure if this reaction is going to go forward or backward or be in equilibrium. But if hypothetically I did that, the negative part of water, so when we're doing reactions with water, it's always either um, 
OH plus is going to react or OH minus is going to react. And so if we have a positively charged thing, the H plus is not interested in that, but the OH minus would be. So here we're going to pair up the NA with the OH. And of course, that's going to leave behind the H plus. And so the reason I wrote a question mark here is because when we look at the products, we can figure out whether this reaction is actually going to happen or not. So sodium has a conjugate of sodium hydroxide. And we look here and we see that it says ions that have strong conjugates do not interact with water. This is a strong base. And the reason that they don't interact with water isn't so much that it never happens. It's more like if it does happen, it's going to undo itself. So what I mean is if this reaction proceeded and NaOH was formed, the very first thing it's going to do is break apart again to form Na plus and OH minus. And of course, if you have H plus and OH minus together in the same solution, you're going to make water. So you end up right back where you were. This is not an equilibrium because it does not happen dynamically. It does not happen sim simultaneously. It is really just always going to lie to the left. No products at all. So we don't write an equilibrium area for that. In fact, this reaction is not going to occur. So we are going to write no reaction because a strong base was formed and it would just fall apart and go back to what we started with. So that's not a reaction. Then we're going to look at the conjugate here. We're going to look at the acetate. Um, and so acetate, again, we can write it two different ways. Pick whichever way you like. When we write with water, by the way, reactions with water are called hydrolysis reactions. Hydro means water, lysis means break apart. So we're breaking stuff apart with water or breaking water apart. Both are true. All right, so again, we're thinking about does the H plus want to hang out with this thing or does the OH minus? And it's always about charge. So if we have acetate that's negative, it's going to want to pick up the hydrogen from the water, which leaves hydroxide behind. So then we got to look at the product and ask ourselves, is this strong or weak? And the answer, of course, is that it's acetic acid, so it's weak. Therefore, we will have an equilibrium arrow. Normally, I draw an, uh, a question mark there and then put the equilibrium arrow in there when I figure out what the products are, but I, I went ahead. All right, so according to this hydrolysis reaction, the sodium hydroxide does not have an effect on pH. The acetate does. And so when we look at it, we're only looking at the products, and our product is a base. So our solution will be basic. Now, a lot of people get tied up in looking at whether what this product is going to do. Don't, because remember, whatever the parent is, is going to be the most concentrated species, and you're just going to make a little bit of these things. So even though this is going to go backward and form more acetate, it doesn't matter. Don't get stuck in a loop, okay? So you're really just looking at this one reaction. You're not asking yourself, oh, I made acetic acid. What that, what's that going to do? Because you're not going to make very much hydrogen from this acetic acid, especially compared to how much hydroxide is formed initially. So we're really just looking at, do I make hydrogen ion or do I make hydroxide ion? In this case, hydroxide, so the solution is going to be basic. All right, so when we think about, you should be able to predict what's going to happen here, but when NH4 plus reacts with water, you can think of it one of two ways, all right? You can either think of it as hydrogen donating to the water, in which case we'll get H3O plus and NH3. Or equally valid is to say to yourself, okay, is the plus going to react with the negative or positive part of water? And the answer, of course, is the negative part. In both cases, you produce an acid. Um, and so when you put NH4 plus in water, it's going to be acidic. Metal ions can do that as well, all right? And so when we're looking at aluminum, it doesn't have any hydrogen or hydroxide on it, but it can hydrolyze water because, again, water has a positive H plus and a negative part, OH minus. 
We're going to take this one step at a time. A lot of you are going to want to put all of them on at once, but it's just going to be confusing. So we're going to put one of the negative portions of water on the aluminum, which means I still have a two plus. By moving one um, OH minus out of the water, I am left with a hydrogen ion again. So these are both cations. Just a reminder, I love this phrase, <laughs> cations are positive like cats they have paws get it it's hilarious um, people also remember that cations are positive because there's actually a positive sign right in the middle of it so cations are the positive thing so when we react cations in water they're either gonna be acidic or they will have no effect on ph if they form a conjugate that is strong so like na plus on the last slide was a cation but it was uh, not a reaction. So those are the two kinds of things that you can expect. Um, so when we think about the reactivity of metals with water, there's a nice table in your textbook. Um, it's table 16.6 .6, and it lists all of the values for the most common ions. Now, this is not in Appendix D, even though these are KAs. <laughs> these are not in Appendix D, even though these are KAs. So remember that when you're working with like aluminum or other metals, you have to look in the actual chapter or these lecture notes. So if we think about just irons, we have Fe2 plus and Fe3 plus. The question is, are, are these KAs related to each other? So Fe2 plus is 10 to the negative 10. Fe3 plus is 10 to the negative 3. Ask yourself, which one is the better acid? Which one's more acidic? And the answer is the Fe3 plus is more acidic because this number, 10 to the negative 3, is much larger than 10 to the negative 10. Don't get confused because this is a 10 and that's a 3. These are negative, so they're opposite. Right? And so having the same size nucleus but losing a different number of electrons changes its acidity. Fe3 plus is far more acidic than Fe2 plus. That's because it is a more condensed higher charge. So it's going to pull the hydroxides away from water even more than Fe2 plus is going to do. So size matters. The smaller you are, the more acidic and increasing charge matters, okay? The higher the charge, the more acidic something will be, generally speaking. So then the question here is why don't alkali earth metals, that's group one metals, why don't they hydrolyze? And so that's gonna be a question in your learning check. Oops, I don't know why, oh, I was hitting the backwards button, that's why. Learning check number four. <laughs> 